Have you ever wished you could control multiple cameras from one location with one operator, all from your computer? Perhaps you're live streaming an event, wishing you could pan, tilt, and zoom your camera as needed. Well, you can do just that with something called a PTZ camera. It's in the name, pan, tilt, and zoom. And today, we've recreated a version of our live streaming setup to show you how PTZ cameras can be used and how to set them up. As the first of two videos, we're gonna to start today with the basics. What are PTZ cameras? How do they work? And broadly speaking, what can you do with them? In the second video, we'll break down this very live stream set to show you how to integrate the PTZs into a more sophisticated multi-camera setup, along with some ideas for other advanced workflows. What are PTZ cameras? PTZ cameras at their core are motorized, self-contained cameras that have a powered zoom lens. Because they're almost always intended to be used in a bigger setup, they often have multiple output options. The exact focal lengths and connections vary from model to model, but today we're working with PTZ Optics Move 4K camera, specifically some 20 times zoom options, and it's got lots of power, both on the surface, but also under the hood. Generally, PTZ cameras don't record to their own media, though there are some that do. Instead, they typically output a signal over traditional video connections like HDMI and SDI, which we're using here, but many of them, including the Move 4K, can output over IP streams or be used in a more advanced NDI setup. We'll talk more about that, though, in part two. For today's setup, we've connected three Move 4Ks to a switcher over SDI, and you can see it right behind me. Now, remember, there's no LCD screens on here either, so while there are menus that can be accessed and configured, most setups will probably do this from a computer like we have back there or a separate controller, which we also have back there. That also means that if you're using the HDMI or SDI outputs to get a clean video signal and you're not configuring the camera from a computer, you'll wanna make sure you avoid bringing up the display during your actual show or else it could show up in the recording. So that brings us to controls, and you have quite a few options here. This is where you can really go all the way from simple to complex, because these cameras in particular have a ton of ways to operate them. The easiest option is perhaps the remote, which I have here. The Move 4K, for example, has a remote that lets you control all the basic functions, pan, tilt, and zoom, of course, but also things like focus points, tracking controls, exposure, video settings, and thanks to the numpad, even things like IP address configuration. For simpler setups like an office or even just as a webcam where the position of the camera won't change much, the remote is probably a good option to at least just control the camera at a basic level. For configuration, the most common way is probably going to be the web interface, which you can access if your computer is attached to the same network as the PTZ camera. PTZ Optics has a very comprehensive web UI that lets you control the main PTZ functions and exposure settings right from the home page. You have an IP-based stream of the camera feed previewed right in your browser, but dive a little deeper and you can adjust everything from the IP encoding settings to the RTMP and SRT streaming settings. And naturally, you also have a full view of the camera's network settings, which you're going to need if you're gonna control this thing over a network. Now, if Ethernet isn't an option or you just wanna avoid network setup altogether, many PTZ cameras can connect over USB as well. In the Move 4K's case, PTZ Optics has a camera control app that provides the same features as the web UI, plus it even has integration with streaming software like OBS, which we'll show in part two. The third option, and probably the best choice for multi-camera setups like ours, is to use a dedicated controller device. We're using PTZ Optics' own SuperJoy controller, which provides a joystick to give you immediate tactile control over the main PTZ functions and gives you the fastest possible way to switch between camera controls. For basic setups, you can connect these controllers directly to an individual camera over a serial RS-232 or 485 connection. Setup should be fairly automatic for these kinds of connections as you don't have to worry about network configuration. For something simple like just an office or webcam setup, you could connect the camera to the controller and then the camera to a laptop to get the video feed. Now, actually operating a PTZ camera is pretty easy. If you've got a joystick controller like us, you can manually follow a subject in real time and zoom in and out responsibly. Other setups might keep a relatively fixed camera position like a wide shot, only adjusting the frame as necessary. 
Some cameras could be dedicated to specific detail or insert shots, changing often but not really tracking a subject per se. So, much like their video and control options, PTZ cameras usually have multiple ways that they can be powered too. The easiest solution is to use the DC power input, which is a dedicated option. Some other cameras have battery options, but my personal favorite is power over ethernet or PoE. The Move 4Ks support PoE Plus to be exact, which provides 30 watts of power from a PoE Plus network switch. Yes, we do have one here. This means that you can power, control, and even stream video from one cable. For example, you could connect the PTZ camera via Ethernet to a PoE Plus capable switch or router, then connect a computer to the same router or switch and stream to the internet or across a local network such as a business. Now, in case you're wondering, that's not quite what we've done here today, but more on that in a sec. There are honestly countless uses for PTZ cameras. Some other simple examples could include conference calls between offices, remote teaching, or smaller live streams that need to be as self-contained as possible. A newcomer could just use the remote and not have to worry about web or app control, which means you could install a PTZ camera somewhere fixed, like a classroom. Technically, these PTZ cameras can connect to streaming services directly over RTMP, so if you want, you could install one as a sort of 24-7 feed to be accessed online at any time. This could be anything from an always-on weather or traffic camera, or even something like an animal watch cam at a zoo. On the slightly more advanced end, you could dedicate an operator to the PTZ camera while still keeping a relatively simple single camera setup. A house of worship, for example, or a town hall meeting may only really need one camera to focus on the speaker, but a dedicated operator can handle it with a controller or even the web interface. A PTZ camera can easily let them reach a wider audience with a setup that can be as simple or as complex as they need. So before we wrap up, let's go over what we've got going on here today. We're only powering and controlling the cameras over Ethernet, but we're capturing video from the uncompressed SDI connection of each Move 4K into a Blackmagic ATEM Studio HD8 ISO switcher. This gives us the highest quality video signal, minimizes cabling, and lets us record isolated feeds of every camera on set, even one that isn't a PTZ camera. But we're gonna save the details of this setup for part two, where we get into the more advanced possibilities of PTZ cameras and show different combinations of connectivity that make PTZ cameras some of the most versatile parts of your kit. So let us know what you'd like to know about PTZ cameras in the comments below. My name is Doug with BH, and I'll see you next time.